So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Exotic Astrology. Today we shall discuss how do you study the transit of current planets over your natal planets. So, for example, uh, today Sun is in Cancer and Moon is in Libra. So, suppose you have a planet in either Cancer or Libra, then how this figures out for you? Or you could also take this for uh, the slow moving planets, primarily like Jupiter, Saturn, Rahu, Ketu. Not too much about the fast moving planets, but you could still use them, all right? So, that's a very important principle of astrology that uh, the transits over uh, houses are important, but the transits over uh, planets in your natal horoscope is even more important actually. Not externally, it's more important internally. Okay. So as usual, if you are new to the channel, then please subscribe to it. And if you want a consultation from me, you will find my website down below. And God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him. So what is transit? So for the newcomers, transit means currently the planets are also moving. So if you have any planet in these signs where in today, currently these planets are moving in your own horoscope, then that is like saying a, a planet today is transiting over your natal planet in your own horoscope when you were born Okay, that time. So, for example, we have uh, the solar return. Solar return is when your sun in transit comes over your original sun. Okay. So, that's like birthday season. So, this means if uh, you have sun in cancer currently, according to uh, the Vedic sidereal astrology, when you were born uh, between um, 15 July to 15 August, near around that time then you will have sun in cancer. So that means now sun is uh, in transit. He is traveling over your natal sun. That is known as solar return. So what happens during solar return? Solar, see, wherever sun is transiting, that is the area you will have a lot of things going on externally. You will always see this time and again, 1000%. So if sun is transiting in your first house, you will see that uh, there's a lot of focus on your body or on your appearance or what people think about you or your reputation could be uh, your concern. If sun transits your 10th house, now I'm not including natal planets, I'm just including the houses here in the beginning. So if sun transits your 10th house, you may uh, see that there are a lot of things going on around your uh, career right or your life purpose your status your name fame you are becoming very conscious of what people think uh, about you uh, so this can happen 11th house can show networks games and circles friends associates seniors all these things so now suppose uh, you have a planet um, let's say you have uh, jupiter in the ascendant and you are a cancer ascendant so now, um, if Sun is transiting over your natal Jupiter, so your Jupiter is exalted, let me assume, because it's in Cancer, and uh, 15th July to 15th August, Sun is in Cancer. So he is transiting over this natal Jupiter, which is exalted. So then what do you do is, you check the houses which this planet rules. Jupiter rules which houses for a cancer? Yes, you are right. He rules the sixth and the ninth. So now, in your bhav chart, he may be sitting in the first house or in the twelfth house. But let's assume he's in cancer. Okay, in the bhav chart, he may be in the twelfth house, or he may be in the lagna also. So, what happens when this sun transits over the sixth lord and the ninth lord? then you suddenly become conscious regarding these two houses, the sixth house and the ninth house. And depending on whichever house Jupiter is placed in the Bhavachan, as I said, because just because it is exalted in Cancer, 
and you are a Cancer ascendant, it doesn't mean Jupiter is in your first house. It can also be in your twelfth house in the Bhav chart. So please check my video on Bhav chart. All right, um, I have made the video already. So then what happens is suppose Jupiter is in the first house of your Bhav chart. Then through the things related to your body, the ninth house and the sixth house will be linked. Okay, so. The ninth lord in Lagna can mean uh, when sun transits over it because sun shows focus external. So it can mean that uh, the guru is somehow contacting you or you are contacting the guru. You are contacting the guru can happen when uh, the sun is transiting on ninth. Okay, but here because the ninth lord is in the Lagna, so it can also mean that. Uh, the guru is contacting you and this particular area of life is getting activated by the presence of the solar energy which is the sun so therefore uh, you will understand that there is something which i have to do externally maybe the guru wants you to do some seva and if suppose a moon transits therefore sometimes people ask me you know when is the best day to get married uh, well, transit wise, in my experience, I have seen uh, the best day to get married is when uh, your when moon is transiting either in your fifth, seventh, ninth, or the eleventh house, depending on your ascendant. Why? Because these are the fifth, ninth, and eleventh, especially because these are the best houses of the horoscope. So, uh, or your uh, moon is transiting over your natal fifth lord or ninth lord or venus okay not so much the seventh lord seventh house more primarily venus i've seen or the fifth lord or the ninth lord or the eleventh lord can also do the job or at times ascended lord can also do the job because what happens when moon is transiting over a particular planet a natal planet uh, in your horoscope so suppose your um, Venus is in Taurus and currently Venus is in Taurus. Okay. Um, so what now what is happening? Your Venus return is happening. Okay. So now your Venus is transiting over your natal Venus currently. Okay. So this is a very interesting placement uh, because uh, when Venus transits over a particular planet in transit over, over your natal planets, then you can certainly uh, get a feeling that uh, there is a feel good factor associated around that uh, planet. So, therefore, if uh, Venus transits over your natal sun, then also it is seen that people become very conscious of their appearance or their appearance changes very much. Okay. Uh, or it can happen that you have suddenly uh, become very conscious uh, depending on your dashas. If your dashas are not indicating that, then it may, it may not happen. But let's assume here that the dashas are having some link with Venus or some link with the sun or the ascendant or the moon also. Then also this can happen. And regarding uh, the event of wedding, as I said, when moon is transiting over your natal Venus or your fifth house, fifth lord, these are the very these are the best times to get married because then those uh, that day will be cherished lifelong because. Moon represents the mind, all right? So when the mind is transiting, then uh, it's like you are fully experiencing the power of that planet, okay? So suppose your uh, natal Venus is in Scorpio. So for you, the best day to get married would be when Moon is in Scorpio. Now you may say, oh, Moon is Nietzsche there, it's in debility. Well, uh, yes, of course it is, but you will still be very comfortable with that energy. Okay? Now, you will also be comfortable with the trinal uh, placements. Uh, so, for example, if your Venus is in Scorpio and if Moon transits Cancer or Pisces, then also you will be very comfortable. You will also cherish uh, the day of your wedding. Or even uh, if you can, then sometimes people ask me that, uh, okay, I have got this offer. When should I join? Uh, should I join on 1st or 5th or 10th or 15th? Generally, it's either 1st or 15th, generally. So, you know, but if there is a free will to choose, if you can choose, then I see when moon is transiting over your natal mercury, okay? Or when moon is transiting over your 10th lord or your sun, because then it is the best day to join a company. 
Now, of course, numerology and other astrological dasha, uh, the nakshatra also matters. Okay. So, similarly, uh, if you take Jupiter's case, generally they say uh, if Jupiter is uh, aspecting Venus or the seventh house, then it's a very good time to get married if your dasha's permit. Why do they say that? Because uh, then if Jupiter is transiting over your Venus or your seventh lord or over the seventh house, then what happens? The sense of uh, blessings the gods is there within that event. Otherwise, you will feel as if um, it's just happening. You, know, you, you won't get that feel-good factor actually. So whenever I try to do muhurta or fix events during consultation for clients, I always check Jupiter and Venus. I mean, Jupiter is difficult because once it sits, it sits there for one year. You cannot change, but at least you can try to control Venus. And especially if, uh, if somebody is trying to purchase a home, then it's a very good. Uh, it, it's very good if uh, Venus is somehow linked with the fourth house. Okay, so so suppose uh, now Venus will be moving to Gemini after some day. So if your fourth lord is in Gemini and you are planning to. Uh, buy a home then next month which is august is the perfect time for you because then venus will uh, give the effects over the fourth lord okay and then you will naturally feel that yes i have come to a good place otherwise you may not be comfortable later on okay now we may not be able to check everything but at least we can try to check transits of uh, See, whenever you have like major events of life, you know, major means big events, like for uh, normal middle class people like us. Uh, oops, what's happening here? Okay. Yeah, so for normal people like uh, you and me, for us, you know, buying a car or buying a home is an important event in life because uh, we may not buy homes, you know, every other day <laughs> or uh, getting married once in life. <clears throat> so, for those events which happen uh, once or twice in life, then in my knowledge, I have seen it is good if you take uh, con into consideration <coughs> Jupiter's transit, okay? So if, uh, if you are planning to buy a home, then uh, home is still okay because you can buy one or two or three homes in, uh, in this life, you could. But especially when it comes to marriage, then I've seen uh, at least Jupiter and Venus, you should take into consideration okay, that they are transiting over your natal planets. And Mercury's transit is also very important. Mercury is primarily the correct for skill and the 10th house. So whenever you are trying to do something related to job or you are trying to apply for new jobs uh, or join a new job, or you know get a promotion or take a promotion or anything related to job or something new you are starting in your career okay some new self-employed work then you must do when mercury is in a good position in transit so especially if mercury is in the lagna or the fifth or the tenth or the eleventh these are the best placements for mercury okay ninth house is also a very good placement for mercury so when you uh, when you take into consideration the natal planets or the lords of these houses, planets are basically lords of certain houses. Then, and in my knowledge, I have seen if you want to do something big in career, you are starting off your own company. Then the best time to do it is when Mercury is transiting over your tenth floor, because then uh, Mercury, the Karaka for skill, is activating this. Okay, or now the problem is Mercury may not. Uh, you may not be able to wait so then you should see when mercury is seventh from it okay so if mercury is seventh from that place then it will aspect the tenth floor okay so then also it's a very good time because then what happens you harmonize with the energy of mercury so then what happens is uh, mercury is skilled so you are very skillful in uh, grabbing ideas because if you want to be successful in any field Apart from hard work and uh, smart work, perseverance and patience, you need one vital skill that is uh, capturing early trends because those are the ones who make you know, millions and billions of dollars I mean, from a monetary perspective. 
so if you cannot capitalize uh, skillfully on different trends uh, within your profession or within your world then it's difficult to be successful okay now you can have reasonable level of success i'm not saying you will be a failure what i'm saying is if you want to be like ultra super duper uh, successful in that case you have to catch the trends early okay, you have to see what is missing in the community what is that which people are looking for that is something which you have to provide and only then you will see that people are wanting you more and more and more and more and more okay so and rahu ketu are also very important if you check you know, mars is also very important mars is more important if you want to like quick start something okay and rahu ketu are important if you want to uh, if you are trying to uh, get rid of some inner weakness i have seen rahu ketu transit is very important so if you have bad habits of drinking or you know smoking all these uh, rahu related habits that when ketu is uh, associated with the house of uh, the uh, the fifth lord or the ninth lord or venus you know when ketu associates in transit then it's a very good time actually because ketu can give you detachment and spiritual enlightenment okay and when rahu transits over saturn then this can be a great time for uh, doing your austerities okay and controlling one senses so these 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 are the ways by which you see actually okay and if something is like uh, some event which happens very frequently you know so for example if um, let's take frequently is not very frequent but uh, quite frequently like some people i know they change cars every 3 years okay so for those people i am saying as an example so for them they can check venus because venus is the card of vehicles okay or you can check moon if moon is transiting over good planets in your chart that is the day you can do or now or you are signing some deal once a year twice a year okay so it depends on related to what that deal is okay so whenever you are doing consultations for muhurtas then uh, these are the things you should take care because uh, whenever a person wants a good muhurta the person wants to think that uh, the event should be that that day of the event should be good because people are very emotional on those days you know imagine uh, imagine uh, somebody is getting married and you give a murta that oh, uttar falguni is a sthira nakshatra and it falls in the sixth house that will lead to a disaster because the day of the marriage the wedding can the day of the wedding the event can be called off i have seen this happening when moon transits the sixth from the bhav bhav chart lagna because sixth house is denial of marriage okay so do not fuel the sixth house on the day of the wedding wedding is very dangerous now of course that doesn't mean that if the dasha is bad uh, later on the marriage will always be good no if the dasha is bad ultimately the marriage will be bad but forget about the future i am saying regarding that day how when you are selecting the mood okay so suppose your moon is transiting in the 8th house or the 12th house and you say oh today moon is in uh, you know uh, maybe hasta nakshatra or it's in rohini or it was rohini is related to vehicles so then it might lead to disaster because that day there may be a crash which the person won't like right uh, so therefore check the house and check the planet okay and try to see how the both of them are playing together and especially when it comes to event of wedding or you know buying a home because uh, generally these are very rare events in a person's life kali yuga is an exception of course <laughs> all right thank you very much for your patience and if you are new to the channel then please subscribe to it and i'll put some other videos on transits and the stars here what is there with you all the time just you look to him and you'll find him and if you want a consultation from me or any muhurta analysis you can go to my website okay thank you